this video is about drawing a cartoon cowboy, you know, six shooters, all that kind of thing. That's the kind of thing they're famous for, and that's what I'll be drawing. I'll be showing you right from start to finish, from the absolute scratch position to the finished color version. Uh, I'll be using Procreate program, which you get on iPad, um, but it doesn't really matter. That's just easy for me because I can do it rapidly and I can post it onto the internet more easily than I could any other way. So cowboy, guns, six shooters, fun like that. And uh, you're going to learn something today, I hope. And we start with the underdrawing. This is always necessary when you want to create a good professional finish. I always advocate it. I know many of you will have seen um, cartoonists, you know, the, the kind of people doing those drawings with a big felt pen or something like that, and they're doing something quite rapid, but that's not the genre that we're working on here. We're trying to do something that would result, if it, you know, in, in the end, would or could result in the creation of a, a really good uh, character for a cartoon strip or a story. That's really what this style is all about. And you can see that what I'm doing here is I'm playing with it a little bit, kind of sculpting it, marking, making marks, trying to get some kind of a pose. I want it to be kind of amusing, you know, slightly exaggerated in the way that, that a cowboy might stand, you know, with his standing there as if to say, come on, let, you know, if you pull your gun, I'll draw on you. And, and you know, he's, um, his, his fingers are probably twitching a bit there as he's working away. That's what I'm trying to, uh, to depict here, um, which is great. You know, I've got some contour lines on there rather than just sketching the outline. I've tried to create the contour of, of this character's chest as well. And on the forearms, which give me quite a good steer when it comes to the point where inking comes into the game and inking will come in uh, at some point. So I'm, I'm now giving him two six shooters, uh, two gun belts. The two gun belts are um, separate entirely from the belt that holds up his trousers stroke pants, depending on where you're from. Um, here I am just uh, getting in for a bit of detail on the face just to give myself an idea of what I'm going to do. This is all done for the first time. This is not a character who's existed before. I'm just putting things on, on the page or on the screen in my case uh, and just uh, you know saying to myself, am I happy with that? Does that work? Now I'm going to be looking at the expression on his face. There has to be an element of tension in it. And of course, these, these chaps, these uh, cowboy types, they had to look really like they were never afraid of anything. They are, you know, implacable. And that's what he's doing. But you can actually see, if you, if you look at the eyes and the way the mouth is set, you can just about pick a little bit of uncertainty in there. Because of course, in the next few seconds, this man's life could be over. And we want to try and get that carried into the, uh, into the, uh, the, the, the feeling of the drawing as well, that there's jeopardy here. But it's got to be, uh, primarily, it's got to be amusing, slightly funny, slightly silly. Um, and that's, that's how this all works. So we'll just uh, allow that to roll on for a bit. You can see here the, um, the, the, the choosing of a, of a pen to start using the ink. And I've chosen to use uh, a point which works exactly like um, a dip pen would work so that if you press slightly harder you get a slightly wider line and if you press gently you get a very thin line and that gives plenty of expression here now we're going around his eyes we want to put a few lines in because you know he's not a little youngster he's been around a while this fellow and he's he standing there being completely defiant cowboys always for me always seem to have some kind of thing around their neck you know neckerchief as I would call it neckerchief as some of them called it around the time and um, a waistcoat or as I would call it a waistcoat um, that he wears also not going into massive detail on this we're, we're still I wouldn't quite say impressionist but we're not going for absolute realism in any way because 
as I stress most of the time with these things, this is a cartoon. It's not an oil painting and uh, we're not going for the realistic style cartoon that you might find in say you know some of the some of the darker Batman type ones which which always look um, pretty realistic but always a bit dark as well. Now you can see what's going on here I've, I'm taking a guess at how guns look I suppose if I was if somebody said to me right I need you to create a cowboy for um, a, a proper commission I would go out and look around for photographs of guns to use as a reference. Um, I've never held a gun in my life hope never to do so either um, but that's just an impression of a gun you can see it's a gun I can see it's a gun so you know we're all happy and we've got these fingers with a bit of tension in them as if he's just kind of flexing flexing his hands a bit the drawing of hands like this is often a great challenge it's a challenge to me it's always a challenge to get the hands because because they carry so much um, kind of emotion in them and so as you can see there, I've not followed the lines, the pencil lines exactly, but I've managed to get uh, enough tension into those hands that I, that I wanted to have. Um, so here's his second six shooter on that side. Um, there you are, get the, get the trousers stroke pants in here, make sure they've got some creases in them, don't make him look smart like he's got a suit on or something like that, because this is a fellow who perhaps spends many hours a day um, in the saddle so that's what uh, we're trying to depict just a cowboy he's looking not too bad at the moment don't you think he's okay and if I was again you know if I was working on this as a as a commission somebody said we want you to produce a cowboy I'd do this 15 times to the point where um, I can draw this person in any number of poses I can draw him without a hat and I can decide whether he's got lots of hair or is maybe a bit thin on top or completely bald or whatever it might be I'd have the opportunity to work hard on this but what I'm really uh, simply trying to show here there I am just uh, naming a one of the layers so I know it's the color one when I want to go back to it but um, yeah I would I would work on this to the point where I know the character inside out upside down and back to front and then I would be able but I would still start with underdrawing every time because I just you know I want to get the pose right pose is, is so important and I still feel even though I've been doing this for many a long year I still feel that I could improve on my characters poses an awful lot here we are choosing colors now what I've what I've thought about here is that this is a person who wears clothes that are not brand new that whatever color was in them when they were bought has probably faded a fair bit uh, and has grayed out and maybe it's got dust on it that kind of thing so what I didn't want for a, for a cowboy type figure was to have you know a brilliant red hat or a, you know something that's perfect sky blue or you know turquoise because if you live in an environment such as a cowboy everything's a bit worn everything's a bit gray the colour's been been burned out of it by the sun a fair bit as well. Here we are, we just want to get some slitty eyes and get his teeth in there as white. Um, and that, that sort of faded red, which if you ever saw the, the old westerns uh, on the television that featured people like John Wayne, they always seemed to wear long johns um, with uh, that colour. You know, very fa probably was brilliant scarlet when they bought it but it became a kind of a drab red well okay this chap isn't wearing long johns but I just like that color for cowboys I think it makes sense um, yeah, we, we take the the pants stroke trousers and we'll just make him a kind of a, a a colorless dark brown it's not you know there's nothing colorful about this character really um, just fill I'm using the the fill functions on here because for larger areas uh, you, it, it's just well, obviously you, as you can see it's just faster bang there it goes nicely done um, again a bit more bit more kind of dull brown for this worn out old uh, waistcoat 
take the pick on pronunciations. I tend to use a more traditional uh, English pronunciation, which would make that a Westcott. Uh, curious, I know. I still think it's curious, but it amuses me, so I like to use that. Just tidying up a few parts of the colouring here, because as you work away, sometimes you, you end up leaving little white spaces, and it's, mm, it doesn't... And, uh, there are times when it can look quite good, actually, but not when you're doing this. Yet another shade of brown for one of the gun belts. There you are. Slightly different for that one. That's a bit kind of greener if you can see that. Now we'll take that neckerchief and we'll imagine that at one point it was a really good strong blue. You know, maybe he he bought that in a nice uh, a nice store somewhere out in the Midwest when it was hanging up and looking nice and blue and he thought, oh, that'll give me a bit of, bit of colour around the neck. That'll make me look a bit dashing. And then after wearing it for a short while, it's gone all dull blue. Well, everything would do in that climate and that environment. So the challenge here is finding enough different dull colours I could have done them all the same, I suppose, but it wouldn't really look very good. Um, so I'm just, you know, this is a kind of a redder color for the for the gun holsters, and um, let's let's give him some tan boots or shoes. You can't tell from here, but I would say they're probably boots. Cowboys, cowboys wear boots, don't they? Personally, I don't spend an awful lot of time, apart from, apart from the shape of the boot, I don't spend a lot of time on the detail of it. It's, uh, um, I suppose there could be circumstances where it's important, where, you know, somebody spots a pair of shoes that, uh, that, that someone's stolen off them and they can tell, so you'd need to put some detail on it. But really, in most of my cartoons, I don't, uh, I don't put uh, much detail on the shoes. Here, what I'm doing is what I call the shades, which are light and dark, and I make a special layer for it so that if I make a mistake, it doesn't spoil what's underneath. And I'm also using um, an airbrush technique, which this software allows me to do. Most of them do. Most drawing softwares have got something like an airbrush technique, and um, that's what I'm using here because it, can, it just gives a softer edge. Others work with a harder edge, and that's fine too. It, everything has its way, and I alternate between them, to be honest. Look, a little bit of darkness under the brim of his hat there. Gives life to it. Little darknesses on his face. There's no, as usual, there's no absolute right and absolute wrong on this, because I've chosen to say that the, the light is coming from sort of above and in front of him, so we get a shade under his nose under his bottom lip and under the under the rim of his hat. Um, we could have had the light coming from other directions, but you do just that. That's all you have to really be careful of, is to select the direction of the light, always assuming you're going for something with shadows, which in this case, I am. I could do the shadows by cross-hatching, just using the, the pen. Um, but this is a technique which I quite like, and, and using uh, if I was drawing with a pen and you know a dip pen and some paper, I probably would have simply stuck with those lines. But since the, uh, the the drawing software offers this kind of opportunity, where you can use these sort of, you know, I don't own a, a, an airbrush. I never have owned an airbrush. You'd have to own one in order to do it with the, uh, you know, in your home. But with the software, that among many other things is available. Put a bit of background in, try and go for something that looks a bit sunbaked. It's quite important. Put the shades on, something a little bit, something just a little bit lighter now, just to, to show where the, the actual source of the, the sunlight is coming from. 
We won't go too crazy with this. You could, but we're not going to. He's not bad, is he? He's okay. And if I were to do it all over again, he'd probably be completely different. I do have a tendency to draw fat, jolly types, um, but this one, I've kept him looking like a man who's been in the saddle for a good long time without, without too much leisure. There you are, now using a smudging technique. You, that, that's another thing which is wonderful in these um, uh, drawing software programs. Wonderful to just to be able to smudge things and give a little bit more character to them. So that's pretty much it really, there he is. Um, do remember to subscribe, won't you? Subscribe and share and give me a like. I want to be able to produce more and more of these and show more and more people how to do this kind of thing. You'll see some links at the end of this uh, to go to some other films. And um, I hope that, uh, that you're able to go and look at them and enjoy them uh, and share them with your friends. They're really good. Even if you, even if you know uh, something about art, you can always learn something from somebody else's style and somebody else's technique. We've all had a different path. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>